everyone. Today's video is slightly different. I am going to be trying my hand at 1830s hair. I am going to be moving into 1830s for a little bit, so I figured I would start things off with a bang and try my hand at the wacky hair that is the 1830s. If you haven't seen 1830s hair before, I will just pop a couple of examples up right here. You can see they are pretty wacky and wild. Um, I think the saying for the 1830s was, if you think you added too much, add a couple more, and then you've got the perfect 1830s hair. So I have prepped my 1830s wig pieces. I am really excited to see what will come of this. I've been playing around with a couple ideas and yeah, I, I love the 1830s, they are so wacky. I think a lot of you will agree with me, when you first see the 1830s, it's, it's kind of like, what is going on? And then the more you get into the 1830s, you just kind of fall in love with it. So I'm definitely in that falling in love with it stage and I'm really excited to try my hand at some 1830s hair. So let's get started. So to start the hairstyle off, first I need to do a little bit of prep work. So I have two of these side clip-in bangs. I just picked them up on Amazon. I will link them down below if you're interested. So I think these are the eight inch ones. The hair color is not an exact match up in the roots, but it's pretty close when you get to the rest of my hair. So I'm gonna have to prep this first before I can curl it. And to do that, I will be coloring in the roots. I'm going to be using these to give the hair a little bit more realism. Uh, just also, since hair normally isn't just one straight color, I'm going to be using these to kind of blend in to create roots for my wig pieces. And for the rest of the hairstyle that's going to go on top, I have picked up several of these ponytail volumizers. I think these ones are 18 inches. Um, so I've picked up several of them and these I'm just going to be using for the braids and everything that's going up on top. So that's where we are and let's get started. Before coloring the bangs, first I gave them a quick brush to make sure they were free of any tangles. Then, starting on the bottom weft with the lightest marker, I began shading along the root line. I slowly began adding the darker colors to the hair to try and blend everything together as I went. I repeated this process along each weft. As I got closer to the top layer, I used a lighter hand with the markers to try and keep the colors from becoming too strong. Once that was done, it was time to add the rollers. First, I wet the hair to make it more manageable, and then I rolled it up in perm rods. Once both sides were rolled, I then boiled a full kettle and filled the bowl to create a bath for them to help set the curl. After searching online, I found several sites that mentioned curling synthetic hair with boiling water. The time varied on the site, so I decided to go with the middle ground and dunk the wig in for a max of 25 seconds. Once both pieces had been dunked, I then set them aside and let them air dry for three days. They needed to be 100% dry, otherwise the curl wouldn't set. So while those were drying, I began working on the Apollo loops. I used paper to create a mock-up and then cut horsehair crin to the length of that paper, plus 5 inches to create extra loops that would help secure the Apollo loops to my head. Thank you. 
Next, I cut millinery wire to the correct length, plus a little extra to fold up the edges. And with everything cut, I then used a zigzag stitch to attach the wire to the edge of the crin. And once that was done, I set everything aside and began working on the curls again. Once I'd confirmed that the curls were in fact dry, it was time to take them out of the curlers. And then I carefully began separating the curls to create even fuller bangs. And finally, to set the curls in place, I hit them with a very strong hairspray. Once they were done, it was time to finish up the Apollo loops. I began by brushing out the wig once again to get rid of any tangles. And then using a seam ripper, I removed the wefts from the lace. Once the wefts were removed, I then trimmed them to slightly larger than the loop frames and stitched them to the frame. And once I had the right amount of hair attached to the frame, I then combed it over the form and hit it with copious amounts of hairspray. I then held this in place with clips until the hairspray set, and once that was done, I used a hair from the wig to whip around the edges of the form to keep the hair from falling off. And finally, I braided the excess hair to be used in the style later on. With the prep complete, all that's left to do is put the pieces together to create a fabulous 1830s style. So to start things off, I need to do the decorative part. Now, in the 1830s, they do have the part down the center, but one of the more, uh, I think, used parts that I've come across is kind of like a, a V part. So it's sectioned off into three sections, and that's what I'm going to be trying to do today. So starting off... Kind of just bring this back here. Gonna get that out of the way. And then I repeat on the other side. There we go. 
So I think that is even. So I'm just gonna pull this back out of the way and start with these ones first. So, first thing I need to do, because I have these curly wig pieces, which will be going on here, is I need to get this hair tight and out of the way. So, to do that, I'm gonna create two little wacky ponytails on the side. Okay, so we've got the hair like this at the moment. We've got my other hair pulled back and this needs to be taken care of. So to do that, I'm just going to simply braid this up and make two little buns. And then from there, these just get wrapped around. There we go. So those are nice and contained. Now I can start working on the back of the hair. Now for mine, I'm going to make it fairly simple in the back. I know you can do like, um, basket weave hairstyles and different bunch of different hairstyles to make it all decorative in the back but I'm gonna be sticking to fairly simple and uh, just going from there. To make it very very simple I am just pulling my hair back pretty high up on my head. There we go. So I've got my two buns and my main ponytail. And from there, I'm just going to section this in half and then create two smaller braids. Okay, so I've got my two braids or plaits, whatever you want to call them, and those can just hang out for a minute while I start attaching my Apollo loops. I do have the tail for these ones, and then I've also got the metal or the millinery wire that loops around the side sticking around the bottom, and I'm going to be pinning to the millinery wire to help keep it in place. So let's set the big one first. And I'm just pushing it right at the base of my braid. And I want to pin this in here very securely because otherwise these things fall out quite easily. So this one still wants to move quite a bit. Okay, I think that's in there pretty good now. Maybe one more to be safe. <laughs> okay, that one's in there. Now it's time to move on to the next one, which is the medium sized one. And that one is going to be going in front of the braid. And I'm going to angle it just ever so slightly. Thirdly, this one goes in and it also goes in front of the braid. Okay, so now I've got the main Apollo loops in. This one's still a little bit wiggly, but it will get better once I secure all the other braids. So at this point, I am just winding the braids around until everything is secure and in place and then I can continue with the decorating.
at this point, it's pretty secure now. The amount of braids, so you can kind of mush everything around. So, for the final braid, I'm going to put this big one in. And this is to try and cover up anything in the back. So this one has got the little wire clips on it. I'm just gonna loop it in. Oh, that looks so cute. <laughs> so I love this just goes around and gets all pinned in just to secure it to the head. I'll show you what it looks like from the back. So you can see, oh, that one may need a little bit more zhuzhing. There you go. And for the most part, like this is really secure. Okay, this one's not that secure, but I have to make it better. There we go. So this one, because it is so tall, it will like to wibble. But oh my goodness, this is cute. This is really cute. Okay, so now that my hair is up, I can finally put in my side curls and then I can start decorating. So these are just simple little clips and they just clip right on over my little side buns here. There's one, <laughs> so cute. And I'm just trying to keep it to the side of the part. And there we go. So this is the base of the hairstyle done. And now I just get to decorate it. Oh my goodness, I love this. Okay, I think I'm done. I like how this looks. I'm just gonna quickly smooth out my hair. Yeah, I think I'm done. I really like this. I'll turn around so you can see it. So I might add more in the back once I actually get a look in my bigger mirror. Other than that, I think I really like this. There you go. I think this took me well under an hour. <laughs> Filming, it took a little bit longer, but probably if I was doing this in a rush, um, I could probably get it done in under 20 minutes. So I really like how this hair turned out. I love this. It is so darn cute. I I'm debating if I want to go to the grocery store like this now because <laughs> oh my goodness. it's so outrageous. It has to be shared. Uh, so I definitely need to go take some photos of this and uh, we'll see you in a minute. Okay, so this is the finished look. I absolutely love how it came out. I did end up adding another rose to the back um for i guess just a little bit of balancing it out but oh my goodness i am absolutely in love with 1830s and i can't wait to dive more into it so as i mentioned at the beginning of the video this is a bit of an intro to 1830s i've never done this time period before and so i'm gonna be focusing on i guess 
this for the next little while. If you decide to make an 1830s hairstyle yourself, please, please tag me. I also recommend checking out Nikki's videos on her 1830s hair. I will link them down below. Uh, they were very, very helpful for me when I was trying to figure out how this all went together. So I think that is everything for today. I am going to go enjoy this 1830s do. Anyways, I hope you have a lovely day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Anyone else see a balding Prince Valium with this current look? It may just be me. Let me know if you get the reference. So to start things off, I need to do the uh, decorative, what do you call it? The part. My legs are totally asleep. Note to self, don't sit on the floor next time. Oh yeah. Head banging. It's pretty secure, actually. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. <laughs>